Hello and welcome everybody to this very special Make With Meg with Meadow Arts. Welcome aboard. Um, so we're going to officially start today's session at 2.15. Um, just realised that with tech and all those kind of things, it's good to give people a little bit of time to rummage around and get the materials and come back to the screen. So we're going to start the activity officially at 2.15. Um, and while we are kind of like waiting for everyone just to join, um, I'm just going to put my makeup on because it's all about beauty, uh, this workshop. Uh, it responds to an amazing exhibition called Skin Deep by the artist Oliver Jones that is curated and produced by Meadow Arts at Barrington Hall National Trust Estate. Um, so the materials you're going to need to scavenge around the house ready for our 215 start are two pieces of card. Um, now I would recommend a cereal box because you could cut that open and use two pieces within that. Um, I've actually been doing so much crafting recently um, that I've used up all my cereal boxes. So I've just got real card. Um, hello, Felix and Ione. Hi guys. Um, so I've actually uh, just got some actual real two pieces of card, but if you've got a cereal box, it'd be great to grab one of those. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Lovely to hear you guys. Um, so you're going to need some cereal box card or just two pieces of thin card and um, preferably not really thick uh, cardboard for this activity. Uh, you're going to need a magazine. Um, so magazine wise, um, just a magazine that you um, enjoy and you're also happy to cut up. So I collect Vogue, so I've just got a Vogue magazine, so it's got lots of pictures in that I like, and I'm happy to cut that up. So a magazine that you're happy to cut up. Um, some a stash of recycled papers. So kind of what do you have paper-wise that you could use? Do you have newspaper? Do you have wrapping paper? Do you have brown parcel paper? Do you get fancy loo roll that's wrapped in that pattern paper? Um, any kind of recycled papers that you've got would be great to grab out a little stash, a little selection of those. Um, a pencil or a pen, so it's a collaging activity but you're going to need something to mark out. Um, some scissors. Hello to the glaziers. Hello Oliver Jones. The artiste, VIP is in the house. Hello. Um, you're going to need some scissors and you're with evil. Oh, brilliant. Um, you're going to need some scissors, um, some glue, and if you don't have glue, just some tape will be absolutely fine. Um, and a little stash of items um, that reflect um, that reflect you. So some items that can fit in the palm of your hand that you feel like they're your favourite toys, your favourite props, perhaps some beauty items, anything that you feel reflects you, things together. Looks like um, Felix is probably going to be grabbing an avocado by the looks of that. Brilliant. Oh, thank you very much, Becky. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd get dressed up a little bit for this uh, special. Um, it's all about how we want to present ourselves. So, you know, why not put on this massive headdress? Hello, we've got lots of people coming in. We've got Jamila, Stuart and Tia in Shrewsbury. Hello, guys. Oh, fantastic. Josie and Soph, hello, guys. Oh, we've got Carly in from Liverpool. Hi, Carly. Fantastic, guys. So we're going to officially start today's workshop um, at 2.15. So just enough time to grab all these materials. Can you read that materials list okay there? I can put it a little bit closer. I can do it like... So 2.15 is when we're going to officially start um, the workshop. And these are the materials you're going to need to scavenge from around the house. Hello, Anne. Lovely to see you. You're not sure if you have card. If you don't have card, just utilise a piece of paper, Felix. That'll be absolutely fine. Um, if you have a card, as in, I think the most ideal thing for card would be a um, cereal box. I just ran out of cereal boxes because I've been crafting so much this week. I've used them up for everything, so I'm using real card. But um, what I would like to do is you to use a cereal box. It'd be ideal if you've got a cereal box that you could cut into, into cut open. That would be ideal. Hello, Ben. Hello. Oh, fantastic. Look at my pizza box. That's a fabulous idea, Nikki. Fabulous idea. Gorgeous. We've got Elizabeth in the house. Fantastic. I'm going to get my makeup on. Um, I'll put the screen up a little bit higher. I'm just going to get my makeup on while we get ready um, so that I can be ready to present myself at 2.15 to you guys. But do grab your bits. Hello to the glaziers. Hello to Isabel. 
Fantastic, guys. I'm going to take my headdress off for, um, just to put my makeup on. Oh, well done, guys. So I would normally play a little bit of background music, but YouTube don't like that. So if anyone has any particular music that they like to play in the background whilst they're crafting, do feel free to put that on. Um, and so here we are. I'm broadcasting live from my studio in Bristol to you guys. I'm just putting my makeup on because, you know, beauty is only skin deep. So I need to top it up with a little bit of man-made mascara. Get myself ready. Today's activity is objectify yourself. So you're going to need a lovely stash of objects that could fit in the palm of your hand. Perhaps your favourite toys perhaps your favorite snacks, anything that fits in the palm of your hand, a little stash of about five items would be absolutely ideal. Hello, Alice and Pepper. So we have got Texas in the house. Hello to Texas. Fantastic. Lovely. Who else have we got? Putting the model, oh, fantastic, that's good crafting, like crafting, yeah, brilliant, Steve. So Steve is putting on The Model by Craftwork, which is a brilliant craft along song. Also perfect for um, crafting, because it's in the name. So absolutely, craft works, you know, get it in. Ideal, guys. So thank you so much for leaving your paddling pools, for leaving the sunshine for a moment and having a little craft break. It is good for the mind to do a little bit of craft and break up your day. I do appreciate that it's a lovely sunny bank holiday, so I appreciate you guys for joining me here today. So lovely to have so many of you in. Um, so you'll be able to, some of you may be joining and may not be able to participate in the chat. Hi, Ali, lovely to meet you on the internet. Um, some of you may realize that there's a chat that you can't participate in. Um, that's because you've not subscribed to my channel. So if you click subscribe, then you'll be able to chat um, in the chat back to me. Hello, Ashley, another person from America. Fantastic. An international broadcast. Super duper. Um, so welcome, everybody. We're going to officially start at 2.15. These are the materials you're going to need to find. Um, because this um, exhibition that we're inspired by, by artist Oliver Jones, who is in the house, um, is called Objectify Yourself. Uh, isn't called Objectify Yourself, that's what this workshop's called. His, his collection is called Skin Deep, and there's lots of different pictures, and it's about um, our perceptions of beauty and how we present ourselves. So I've gone for an extra bit of a glittery flourish today. Um, and I'm just putting on loads of, of makeup really, because beauty really is only skin deep. So I'm just getting ready um, whilst, we, whilst, whilst you guys come and join me. Um, so we're gonna start at 2.15. Materials are um, two pieces of card or just paper will be absolutely fine if you haven't got any card. But what I mean by card is, and, and all of these materials is improvise and find what you have around the house. I would really strongly recommend a cereal box would be absolutely ideal for card. So a thin card, not like cardboard. Um, I'd rather use paper if you haven't got a cereal box or any thin card, that's absolutely fine. Um, a magazine that you're happy to cut up um, and stick down. Um, a selection of recycled papers. So have a little dig around your recycling box. Um, perhaps you have fancy loo roll that, um, that comes wrapped up. Um, you could use that, that lovely wrap that comes in that loo roll. You um, maybe have newspapers, you maybe have some magazine pages, and perhaps you have some wrapping paper or some brown parcel paper. Just grab yourself a different stash of recycled papers, a pen or a pencil, which is just for uh, marking out so we're doing a collage activity so you won't see the markings but just anything that can make a mark on those papers and some glue would be pref um, preferred but if you don't have glue tape is absolutely fine we're just going to rock the aesthetic of um, pandemic use what we got 
Um, and items that reflect you, that you think when you look around, you think, ah, that is something I use all the time, a lipstick, or it could be your favourite toy that you go to you go to bed with. But it has to be a, an item that can fit in the palm of your hands. Um, so a little stash of items would be great. Hello, Nina and Joe. Who else have we got coming in? We've got Emma G, hello. And Lizzie Ross, who's looking forward to this. Thanks, Lizzie. Looking forward to you being in the house. Lovely to meet you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am just getting ready for the craft along. I don't know how you guys have been finding it in lockdown, but I actually find I'm so much more productive when I've got a full face of makeup on. Don't know why that is, but you know. So, I kind of thought I needed to do something whilst people trickle in until we, from 2 till 2.15. So, I just thought I'd put my makeup on because it fits with the theme pretty well. So, welcome, guys. We're going to officially start at 2.15. I think there's a very slight, oh, it's come back now, there's a very slight lag just then, but do let me know if there's any tech problems. We've done lots of tech testing. I've got a good camera on, so hopefully we are a-okay. Hello, Jamie Jackson. Not tried that yet, what, putting a full face of makeup on? You should give it a go. I recommend if no one has actually worn makeup before, seeing how productive it makes you, and it stops you touching your face. So it's a win-win, really, because if you touch your face, you smudge it. So, you know, win-win. I'm going to put some blush on. Quite warm today. I wonder if those people from Shropshire and... Has anyone left their paddling pools to be here? Is anyone coming in costume right now? Oh, Ramona, big beauty blogger, fantastic. Hello, Ramona. Ali says, hello, Mrs. Megan. I'm looking forward to doing my collage with you. Thanks from Paul, age eight. Hello, Paul. Lovely to have you in the house. Fantastic. Fantastic, guys. So for those people just joining, not swimming here, no, I know. I mean, we can't swim at the moment, can we? But I tell you what I've been doing a lot of, guys, is I've been building a leisure corner in my living room. This is real, I've been doing this and it is amazing. I've got like a little tiny paddling pool that I fill with like frothy, cold water, like lukewarm water. I've got my LED Argos fire that I crack on. Um, I get myself double booked with two books. I put my, my feet in the water and I just like pretend that I'm on the beach. And because I've got a projector from a pro an art project that I did, I I sometimes just actually put that down and put like scenes of the beach on it and I just like really chillax it's like so nice so I really recommend doing that hello everybody welcome to this meadow arts make with meg special edition live broadcast based around the skin deep collection by vip artist ollie jones who is in the house um we're going to be doing some um profile portraits today um called objectify yourself because you are in charge of you so what objects do you want to objectify yourself with so um for those people just joining us we have got two minutes until the official start which means i need to get my lipstick on really quickly actually but these are the materials you need to grab in uh improvise improvise with whatever you've got from around the house You've got a massive paddling pool with seats. Oh my gosh, Andy and Felix, that is amazing. And I own it. Okay. Oh, I've got Bob here helping with me with messages. thinking actually Ollie I, think, I don't know if you know but like you do really weird faces when you put makeup on I was wondering that I'm going to show you guys some pictures of Ollie's work soon and I was just imagining him doing a picture of the faces that that people put that people make when they put their makeup on and how funny they are okay Oh, we're on 2.15. Let me just put my lip seal on the top and then we are ready to rock and roll and craft a Runos. No worries, is ready to go. 
is Snow Worries, if you've not met him before. He's wearing a crocheted rainbow badge that my mum sent to me. He's very happy. He used to sit in the front seat of my car um, so that I could say that when I was driving for my projects in different places that I was driving around with no worries. But current climate has meant he's come into my daily life with me as a bit of a uh, mascot and a bit of a lifeline, to be honest. Each to their own. Okay, Tracy O'Brien, fantastic. And you open your mouth wide. Yes, I know, me too. I open my mouth really wide when I'm putting mascara on. I have no idea why. It's just the oddest thing, but what an amazing collection of pictures that would make. Fantastic, guys. Jenny, have to open mouth when doing eyes. Yeah, it's the rules, it's so strange. Fantastic, so we've got Jenny in the house. Welcome, everybody. So I think we are gonna get started. So those people just joining, here is the materials list. As with any Make With Meg, improvise heavily. Use what you've got around the house. If you haven't got card, and when I say card, I can't stress enough, a cereal box, like low, low tech. Um, but if you haven't got card, um, some paper will be fine. A magazine that you're happy to cut up. Recycled papers, any stash that you've got of different papers. A pencil or a pen. A pair of scissors. Some glue, or if you haven't got glue, tape will be fine and any items that can fit in your hand that reflect you. So a little handful of items. So there are the materials. I'll leave those there just for now. We're gonna get the start sign out of the way because we are starting. So welcome um, to this extremely special uh, Meadow Arts Make With Meg Limited Edition Workshop. Um, so, uh, if you would like to comment and you can't, um, and you have a YouTube account, just click subscribe and you'll be able to send messages in. I'm here with Bob, who's off camera, who is able to help me respond to messages as and when they come in. Um, so, um, my name is Meg. Um, you may know me from Make With Meg already. You may have been to one of my art projects. I make uh, large scale silly art projects with people. I recently had a big exhibition at the Royal Shakespeare Company. Hello to Nikki Salmon, who's in from the RSC today. Um, or you may know me from Meg from Car Boot Disco Bingo. Or you may not know me at all. So welcome to my studio either way. It's great to have you here. Um, I just wanted to just say that this is an open space. The internet is an open virtual space. So just like a museum or a gallery, um, if you would, wouldn't leave your children attended in a museum or gallery, don't leave them attended here either. Um, just, you know, I mean, we're doing crafting, who knows, but just, just a little safety announcement, really. Um, and I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Meadow Arts, who have asked me to come and do this workshop with you guys today. They established in 2004, and they produce um, unique contemporary art in unusual places. So I was trying to think about how to describe an arts producer um, this morning. And when I was in the shower, it kind of came to me. So we often say produce as in like fruit and vegetables. Like where do you get that produce from? And that's because there are people that produce the fruit and vegetables. They aren't the fruit and vegetables, but they produce them. And that's kind of what um, meadow arts do. They produce um, artists uh, or artworks in places by working with all of those people along the produce line and working very closely with the artists and the venues. So they put on exhibitions in um, strange spaces, not always in galleries, um, quite often in places like Barrington Hall or site-specific locations like outdoors. Um, so, oh, hello, Stuart. Um, so our inspiration for today's workshop, which is Objectify Yourself, is the work of Oliver Jones. And this collection of work has been called Skin Deep. And it's on show at Barrington Hall, which is the National Trust property um, in the middle of England. Um, but obviously, because of coronavirus, it's, um, it's closed at the moment. So luckily, I have some artworks here to show you and to talk a little bit more about the work that exists there. So. Um, Bob, could you pass me that first picture? So this picture here is currently inside this lovely old building and it is called Gold Leaf Face Mask 2. And you can see this lady. And the amazing thing about Oliver's work is that 
all of these have been hand created. They are not photographs. And I think quite often, Oliver, do, do chip in to let me know a little bit more about the materials used in these pictures. Um, but I think quite a lot is oil pastels and oil paint, am I correct? And I think that they are so perfectly done. This here, this lady is having a face mask, like a beauty treatment. But instead of using an actual like face mask from Lush or the body shop, she's opted for gold leaf, as in the kind of thing that you quite often um, see massive decorative frames covered with. So frames in old buildings that have artworks inside, quite often are made out of plaster, and then they are, are topped off with gold leaf. So this lady is really after a bit of a luxury makeover. She's really gone for it. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty interested to see what her face looks like underneath this, actually. Pretty amazing. So this is gold leaf face mask too. And then we have this one here, which I absolutely thought, Oliver, was a photograph until this arrived through my post box, the printed, um, this beautiful print that Rebecca organized and sent to me from Meadow Arts. Um, I, until I saw the detail in the print, I thought that this was a photograph. I can't believe it. So this here, this Barbie with all of the markings on is called Beyond Natural. And as you can see, she's either about to have a lots of plastic surgery, she's being marked out for it, but it looks to me like she probably had quite a lot of it already. So fantastic plastic Barbie here. So we've got Beyond Natural. Where is it? Chalk pastels, says Oliver Jones. Chalk pastels these are made out of. And a question there for you, Oliver, if you're able to answer it, why is gold the gold leaf one uh, two, why is it second? Why is this picture here? Gold leaf face mask two. Why is it two? Did you do a number one beforehand? This is what a little extra question for Felix. <laughs> Bob wants to know the answer to that question too. And this one here, I, um, I honestly could not concur with more. Get red that lasts. Honestly, do not buy a cheap lipstick. It will not serve you. It comes off the glasses, comes off everything. So get red that lasts. Get it stuck onto your lips. Keep it there. Um, and you can see this lady looks, she's absolutely stunning, whoever this lady is. Um, and she's putting some red on ready for the day, for the night. Maybe she's having a productive working from home day. Who knows? But she is getting ready. She is getting beautified. So these are just a selection of some of the images that are inside Barrington Hall estate and that will be reopened very soon for you guys to explore. And I'll um, talk a little bit more about it at the end of the workshop, but Oliver Jones is actually doing a little studio tour of his home studio um, on Friday. So do tune into Meadow Arts um, YouTube account and have a little look at that. Ollie says in reply to you, um, I'm guessing it's Felix, but maybe it's Andy, um, Felix, that there have been quite a few gold leaf face masks. So that was the second of probably a little... Um, a, a flurry, a flurry of pictures, really. Um, so um, I was wondering what they kind of mean to me. And I was thinking about the idea of these pictures being inside this old building. And I think that Meadow Arts have really cleverly curated, they put together these artworks um, called the Skin Deep Collection inside Barrington Hall, but in amongst all of the old artworks. They've got the old artworks and then they've got the new artworks. But actually the theme and the way humans are, we've always been obsessed with how we look and our image and following fashion or um, changing our look to, to look a particular way. Um, and we've always done that, whether plastic surgery existed or not. We've always kind of done that. And I love that idea of, of like, who are you? Um, and then what is the message that you want to show to the world in images? And sometimes people can be quite honest. Sometimes people can be too honest and be very unflattering. And sometimes people can be um, can put loads of makeup on like me and kind of like change their appearance and look in different ways. So there are different ways that you can present yourself to the world. I'd love to know what your thoughts are as well. Um, oh, it's Felix. Hi, Felix. Lovely to lovely to have you in. Great questions, by the way. I know, Jenny, good, yeah, definitely right about buying a good lipstick. It's very, very, very important. 
Okay, we've got um, more people are tuned in now. And I just wanted to just say for those people who've just joined us, we're about to start crafting. We've just been showcasing the work of artist Oliver Jones, who is the inspiration for this um, limited edition special Make With Meg with Meadow Arts. Meadow Arts, I hope you like your logo in black and white. I did it on my vinyl cutter and I think it actually looks really good. Um, just saying. I mean, I printed out your logo in colour, but I'm just going to say that. I think it actually looks pretty good in black and white. Um, so materials to grab are some card. Um, a cereal box would be absolutely ideal and you could maybe cut it out. Um, Nikki uh, Salmon has just uh, used a pizza box, so that would be a good idea too. Um, a magazine that you has pictures in that you like, but you're also happy to cut up. Um, a stash of recycled papers, so rummage around to see what you've got. Maybe you've got some wrapping paper, maybe you've got some brown paper, parcel paper. Perhaps your loo roll comes uh, wrapped up, perhaps you've got some old paper bags. Any kind of recycled paper collection that you've got. Um, a pencil or a pen, a pair of scissors, some glue, preferably any sort, or if not, some, some sticky tape would be absolutely fine. And um, a handful of items that reflect you so that you think mm, that's definitely something that I that I love um, and that makes up kind of like who I am that that makes up how I project myself to the world um, so we're going to start crafting um, round, round about now I think um, so I'm going to put down the materials list down here and um Ollie Jones, I asked him, who is the uh, the artist behind the Skin Deep collection. Let's hold, let's put another one of his pictures up here, actually. Put this here. But there we got that red lippy picture, fantastic. So I asked Ollie Jones um, how he would describe um, his art and what he does to his own 10 year old self. And I thought I'd just use that as a description for him. So Ollie says, I make artworks mostly using pastels about the way people live how they like to be seen, and how others think they should be seen, which is quite exciting. And I asked him, where do you make your art? And he said, I'm very lucky. I have my own studio where we live. So I moved all of my work from my studios in Birmingham back to Shropshire, and I now operate from here. So Ollie has got his own home studio set up. And on Friday on the Meadow Arts YouTube um, channel, you can tune in and you can have a little tour of his of his home studio and see what it's like. I can't resist using a liner cutter. You're so right, Jenny. <laughs> Um, so um, we're going to start today's workshop with our profile portrait. So that's what we're here to make. Um, well, it's called a profile portrait and I've called the workshop Objectify Yourself for obvious reasons that you're going to use objects to present yourself. So um, this here is like a little example of the kind of thing we are going to make today. And as you can see, um, it's kind of like a very old fashioned but very modern looking silhouettes and the reason is that in a lot of old artworks from Georgian through to Victorian and through a lot of history um people used to represent themselves because it's very very it's very costly to have an artist to do your portrait they would present themselves using what we used to call shades and a shade is like a silhouette where you turn your head to the side the artist will project a candlelight um, on you and they will draw around um, the silhouette to create like a an outline of your of your side profile and um, there was a thing called a pangraph I think it was called where um, where artists actually used to have one pencil that would draw around the main, a large one, and it would be connected through these kind of wooden sticks and have lots of other pencils off that would do very little versions of the big one. So a bit like when you go inside a photo booth and you have your, um, your photos taken for your passport and you get like a selection of like four or six little pictures, it was a bit like that really, but like the original photo booth and you get a little selection. And then you could put these shades inside a pantograph. Thank you, Jenny. You could put those little pictures inside jewelry. You could put them um, in large portraits and frame them. And people used to have these as, as a way of portraiture. So I thought that's a very kind of traditional method, which meets with the tradition and the old style of Barrington Hall. But we've gone for a very modern approach by using objects to objectify ourselves. And um, yeah, that was it really. So it's kind of like, but also what I thought is that a lot of um, Oliver's work kind of refers back to social media and image and how we how we see ourselves and how we reflect ourselves um, 
online or to other people and I thought this this person kind of looks a bit like the Facebook holding uh, icon so I kind of thought like both modern old great done it um and the most exciting thing I think about one of making a profile portrait like one of these is that um behind here this will be glued down eventually but I've just felt credit for the purpose of showing you but behind here I have hidden a secret message about myself. So as you can see, I'm a, I'm actually a 33 year old, I'm actually a 33 year old thumb sucker, um, which isn't something that I normally put on like my profile information about me on Facebook, or if I had a portrait done, I wouldn't be sucking my thumb. But that is a little secret that I've hidden inside my artwork. And the reason being that artists throughout all of history quite often hide secrets within their art. So quite often, um, so quite often you would have um, old, uh, the old masters paintings would have a painted hidden scene underneath that then will be painted over. Um, even in Disney's workshop where they make illustrated backgrounds in the 50s and 60s, they would have hi hidden secret illustrations that would form if you looked if you would look for them. Um, and, um, and it still happens today. There are hidden messages a lot, a lot of times in contemporary artwork, sometimes literally hidden under things, but quite often um, just like, just like as in like a hidden message it isn't actually a physical message that's been written and hidden under it, but actually there's, there's a meaning that means something to the artist that they don't share with you. Um, and you form your own opinion on what the artwork is about and you don't know what that secret message is that's hidden in there from the artist. So I quite like the idea of putting a little secret message in. So what I'd like to invite everybody to do now before we move over to the making station is I'd like to invite you to grab a piece of scrap paper and a pen or a pencil and very quickly write down a, a secret about yourself, something that you don't normally portray um, to the outside world. So mine was that I sucked my thumb. Um, it could have been something. Uh, what else? What other kind of secrets have you got? Do you have a secret childish toy that you still play with that you that you wouldn't really tell your friends about because you're a bit too cool for that now? Do you have a favorite a favorite game? Do you um, do you pick your nose? Do you have any bad habits? Um, do you feed your greens to the dog when when your when your mum and dad aren't looking? What kind of secrets have you got about yourself? And you can keep these super secret. You could like write this down and completely keep it secret from anyone else in your family and pop it in your pocket because it's going to be hidden inside your artwork forever. So we're creating a secret message that's going to be hidden inside our artwork. So right now, grab a piece of scrap paper. Um, and write down your secret message, something about yourself that you don't normally put on display. And while you do that, I'm just gonna get things set up at the task station. Okay, we're gonna fly you over there now. And um, Oliver Jones said to me in an email last week, he said, another note to his 10 year old self would be make more mess when you're painting. Just have fun with it. And I, we're not painting today, we're doing collaging. But I think that's a really good message with us to take over to the task station because um, this is gonna be a workshop where you're gonna craft along in real time and you're gonna make mistakes. It's not about making the most beautiful, perfect image right now. You can carry on beyond this session finishing and you could tweak it as much as you like then, but don't be afraid just to have a go. And if it doesn't look quite right, don't worry about it. Like we'll re you rectify that later. You can paste over stuff, you can tear stuff off. Please do not worry, leave your inhibitions over there and come with me over here and let's start making. So I'm going to fly you over. We'll put the little light on. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, makes a huge difference, that light. <sighs> yeah, you could rip it up. That's a great idea, Felix. So, um, so via Andy's account, Felix is saying you could even rip up your secret so you don't need to, um, need to have it in one piece. You could even rip it up. That's a fantastic idea, Felix. Um, so the first thing we are going to need to do is get our piece of card. So I ask you to get two pieces of card if possible. Um, so from your cereal box card or your pizza, your pizza box card, you're going to put your piece of card now um, on the table. 
just looking for mine. Fantastic. And I've got mine here. And now what we are going to be doing is I am going to show you how to draw a profile silhouette um, stage by stage. Now, if you are uh, one of our my Make With Meg regular younger audiences, this may not work out for you. That's totally fine. I'm going to show you a different thing that you can do later on. But also, I'd really advise you just to give it a go please give it a go because I think that you'll be really surprised with how this goes. And I'd love to see your pictures at the end of this. Um, so you're going to get your piece of card in front of you. So obviously, I, like I said, um, I'm out of cereal boxes because I've been crafting like mad, making package holidays inside my cereal boxes this week. So I'm just going to pretend that this is like my shreddies design on one side. And this is um, and this is, this is my blank side on the other. So you're going to be using the blank side of your cereal box with the shiny side down just so that you can see what you are doing. Um, and you're just gonna need to use a pencil or a pen. I'm going to be using um, some thick pens just so that you can see my markings, but you could just use any pencil or pen for this. So first thing you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be copying this green line that I'm gonna do. And I've had to try and master some different ways of showing how to do this. So if you can see here, what I'm gonna do on my paper, I'm gonna copy the stage by stage, you're going to draw um, a quite large, using, I'd say, um, two thirds of your paper, a kind of egg shape, like a big egg shape. So you're just gonna do it a bit like this here. So you're gonna draw an egg shape and don't worry about it being perfect. Just have fun at doing a big egg shape like this. Okay. And now what we're gonna be doing is we are going to draw a big box shape that's going to overlap like this one here. So you're gonna be drawing a box shape like this. And that is all for number one. So how did you guys get on? Did anyone get their egg and their box shape done? So that's all you need to have done so far on your big bit of card is drawing an egg and a box shape. Fantastic. And as you can see, it's at a bit of an angle here too. So I'm gonna get number two now. So for this one, you are going to be following, you're going to be following the purple lines here. And so what I'm gonna ask you to do is I'm gonna ask you to draw um, two circles uh, using the purple pens. The first one is going to be, if you look halfway up the egg shape, and you could even do a little, little mark if you want. So I'd say that's about halfway up on that side there. That is where you're going to start by drawing a, a mini egg, it does actually look quite a lot like a mini egg, like a mini chocolate egg there. And it's at a bit of an angle. So if I hold that up, you can see. So it's a bit of an angle like this. Fantastic. And then what you're going to do is you're going to, um, to draw another circle above it with a bit of a gap. So you could do a little finger there if you want to. So you could do a finger gap and you're going to draw another mini egg, but the other way around there. So that's all you're gonna do for that one, two mini X. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your pen and find the very edge of your mini egg here, the top one, and you're going to take this line down. You're gonna slice right through the middle of your other mini egg. And you're gonna go slice right down here. And then you're just going to nip it in. So can you see I've gone a little bit below the box here and I'm just gonna nip that in there. Fantastic. Well done. How are you guys getting on? Is everyone following this okay? Brilliant. And then we're going to go to the third one now. So this time you are going to be following the blue line. So you're following the blue line this time. I'll just bring that down a bit. Okay, so you can see that I have got, oh, 
try and take the lid off my blue shark here. I can't do it. There we go. So now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be following the blue line. I think we'll start with the top of the head here. So if you go right to the top of the head, and you could do a little mark there if you want to, like right at the top, there you see. You're going to start there, and you're going to follow, follow it all, follow the curve of the head round like this. Okay, and then you're going to dash straight through the eye, through the middle, and you're just going to go through the next mini egg, and you are going to end up there. That's all you're doing for that one. Well done, guys. And now what we're going to do is, if I move this along, Okay, now what we're going to do is you're going to do the back of the head. So you can go from the same place, but you're just going to do the take the curve further out, further out. And you're going to take it so that it goes inside that bottom box there. Perfect. Um, and now what you need to do is you just need to add on these um, triangles here, which are really fun to do. And you don't need to be perfect with your triangles. I am normally just really rough with mine. So I do one triangle that looks a bit like this here, just very rough. And I'm gonna do another one, which I do make it just look a bit like squishy. I can just have a good, good time. You can even just go like straight triangle here. You see how rough my triangles are? Very rough. So you've got two triangles that go in here. And that is blue. If you're struggling to follow this and this is too hard for you, do not worry. There is a different technique that we can do later on to bring your portrait into being more of an abstract portrait. So that is absolutely fine. Um, but I'm sure because there's a lot of silence on the old chat, I'm hoping that you, I'm hoping you're following and I'm hoping that you guys are giving this a go. That's what it feels like to me. I keep checking, it doesn't say ropey, ropey signal, so I think we're okay, which is quite exciting. Normally means there's a lot of concentration. I get loads of images after the make with Meg if it's quiet on the chat, so well done, guys. Okay, so now we've got this, it looks like this, and we wanna put this red line on, so you're following the red line this time. And the way in which we're gonna do that is, oh, let's light a little bit on the portrait a bit better. Um, the way in which we're going to do that is this is really, um, Concentrating, giving it a go. You hate silence, <laughs> red line time. <laughs> okay, fantastic guys. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to start at the top of the head. So where you've got that mark there, you're gonna start here and you're just gonna come out and you're gonna do the flick here. And this is what I like to call the Facebook flick because that man who's the holding icon on Facebook, he's got this weird little flicky hairstyle, like a, like a really cool footballer. Um, that goes on in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, gonna go a little bit in now at the top and you're just going to go on the outside of your top mini egg and just go and then weave the line inside and then you're going to go around the next mini egg and this one is going to be your nose so you're going to try and style out a little nose shape really mine always goes very pointy um and then i'm going to go in again here and then you kind of just do a series of wiggles, which will give you your mouth. I like to do it like this. So I like to go uh, draw one hill. And I like to go a little bit further in. And then I like to start about here. So it crosses over. And then I just do another hill. So if you're doing it sideways, you see they look like little, they look like little hills. Um, and then you're going around here. Craftworks would be really good music right now, Steve, to help get through this tension. Um, and then you're just going to go. Um, so then what you do is you're going to round off this kind of straight edge where you've got the purple line. So you're just going around there like this. And now what you're doing is you're just going to do a curve around all of these shapes. So you're going to go curve, curve like this. Fantastic. Well done, guys. Um, and then... Um, the only other red line you need to do now, which is my favourite red line of all, because it does mean finish is here, um, is you're just going to kind of red line, you do a little curve around all of this, and you're just really kind of basic with it, you know, however it goes, so you're just rounding off all of that. And then you've got your side profile picture 
Done. Yours looks like a duck. I love it. Well, I'd love to see your duck. Well done, Felix, for giving it a go. Mine looks a little bit duck-like as well. I've got to say, I'm not, I am, I do have a fine art degree, but fine art isn't really where I'm at. I'm very contemporary, um, more installation, um, as you know, and bits of performance. So it really isn't my forte either. Um, but we're doing a very abstract portrait. So I think well done for even getting it to look like a duck. That is awesome, guys. Absolutely fantastic. We're going to take that off. So we have done our portrait now. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to take a pair of scissors and we are just going to cut um, out our silhouette around the outline of all of it. So you're just gonna take a pair of scissors and you're just gonna cut this shape out. Now we were talking about awkward silences before and I did ask Ollie, um, Oliver Jones, what music, if any, he listens to when he is making artwork. And he said that he doesn't really listen to music, he does, um, but his favorite thing to listen to is podcasts and I think kind of like radio stories. Um, he says he does listen to music, but quite often when a podcast runs out of episodes or his music stops dead, um, he just he just doesn't even realise because he's so engrossed. So kind of like silence is quite conducive to him. Ah, what's the flick for? A good idea, Felix, actually, because this is a moment where you have a choice, actually, to objectify yourself a little bit. I'm going for a very classic profile portrait that looks a bit modern day and a bit traditional. So I'm just using this, this one example. Now, what you could do, um, we're at cutting out stage, but it's fine if you haven't cut around this bit here, is you could actually um, go on and kind of like make make long hair for you if you wanted to. Um, you could take this flick off altogether and you don't have to have that at all. Um, you could take that flick off, you could make it look a bit like you, you could kind of mimic your hairstyle or your, your style um, and make it look more like you. I'm kind of creating it like a generic person, a bit like my internet profile is like a generic thing like everyone else's. And then I'm putting my individuality in with the with the next stage of, of decor. Um, but if you wanted to make yours look a bit more like you, you totally could. Um, and if you also are finding this a bit really hard, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna show you how to do um, a stripped back version of this that's a bit more abstract later on. So we're carrying on cutting out now. This is the thing that takes a little bit of time. Okay. Okay. Oh man, it's a weird world we've kind of let ourselves into with this virtual art, isn't it? It's not. It's never what we used to. Um, da, da, da. and you don't have to be perfect at your um cutting out. Just however it comes is great. So now you can see I have got my silhouette cut out and you can see it looks like the Facebook man doesn't look like me it looks like a Facebook man with a footballer's hairstyle which I'm totally happy with generic and you'll be able to uh, stand out a little bit more if I put it on on a bit of a background like this so you can see mine sticks out a little bit more like that um just so that you can see it so now what I'm going to ask you guys to do is I'm going to ask you to put your amazing silhouettes Cutting out is very satisfying indeed. It's Nina. I need to put glasses on mine. Great idea, Nina. Yes, you could totally put some glasses on yours. So in which case, you are going to probably create kind of like a box um, shape along here. So you would need to just have like a line going up here to kind of show where your spectacles would come because this here is going to be your eye area. That's a fantastic idea. So what are uh, you going to put? Oh, you forgot your class. You can maybe put them on later, Jan, you'll be fine. Um, so you're going to put your profile pictures to one side and you are now going to grab out your assortment of objects that you think um, you could use to objectify yourself. And this is the really fun bit. So now you're just going to grab your recycled papers, your wrapping paper, all sorts of different bits and bats that you have. And I have got here... Um, a stash of papers um, I like to use. Um, so my packaging paper that um, Amazon uh, sends. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Nina. It was your birthday recently. Congratulations. 
cutting out is cool. I nearly snipped a bit of actual hair, though. Oops. Oh, my gosh. Yours looks like Churchill. Well, a bit like you. You're a teacher at the minute, quite teachery and um, serious, Steve. So very good. Um, my packaging that comes from Amazon, um, inside the dirty Amazon, I know, inside the boxes is like packaging paper, like brown paper. And I you keep those. And I just do lots of like silly paint marks using my favorite colors pink and yellow and um, so that I can use those for crafting with so just a top tip for you really if you wanted to reuse some packaging that comes in just do some funny paint marks on them and then you can cut them up into pieces and you can you can put them in a little collage kit for yourself so I've got those painted papers I've got my like I said I get fancy loo roll it gets wrapped up in this fancy looking paper I don't have wrapping paper though but maybe you do um, and I've just got some sheets of nice pages of flowers out of a magazine and a piece of newspaper there. Oh, and I've also got um, some old music sheet um, uh, paper from an actual music book, which I quite like to use as co for collaging. So you're going to grab out your selection of collage papers and you're going to grab your items. You're going to grab um, a pencil or a pen. I'm going to use a pen so that you, it shows up and you can see what I'm doing. And you're going to take your first bit of paper, put the side down that you like, face down. So the side that you like is going face down. And you're going to take your first item. I'm going to use my well done rosette that I use for my Mate with Meg episodes. You're going to put that down on top of your paper and you are going to draw around it very roughly. And then you're going to cut it out. So these are going to look very abstract and a bit like those secret messages from earlier. You will know what they mean. You're the artist of this artwork. You will know what that shape is. Other people will just be guessing. They'll be improvising it. Mm -hmm, I can see that what she really likes is a really long, strange toothbrush. But actually, no, it's a rosette. Um, so now you're going to cut this out. And this is quite fun because this is kind of cutting that I do not... Um, you can spend a lot of time on this or you can be nice and quick because of time I'm being nice and quick. But also I quite like the aesthetic of these quick things. Um, they just create a series of abstract shapes. So we're objectifying ourselves. I th kind of thought, like, why are we doing this? I think that I think it's really important to think that you you're in charge of your image, you know, and like you do you essentially. There we go. I've got my first one ready to go. I'm going to keep that to one side here for my next one. So you do you, like you portray you. So you use those objects that you are really proud of. You're really proud of the fact that um, the fact that um, I give out people rosettes and I encourage people to craft with me. I'm really proud of that. So, you know, that's why I'm using my rosette. The next thing I'm going to use is my paintbrush. And now, um, obviously, I, I'm an artist and that's a very stereotypical object for an artist to have is a paintbrush. So I'm really proud of the fact that I'm an artist and that, you know, I campaign for equal rights for arts within schools, within education, within all sorts of different things. And I, you know, I think it's a brilliant thing. So that is something I need to be reminded that, you know, it's cool. Put, put these things forward. So I've drawn around my paintbrush and I'm going to cut that one out now as well. Here we go. So, yeah, objectifying yourself is actually quite a fun like task to do. And it turns what is classically quite a negative comment when you say women are being objectified or, or whatever as being uh, as like as objects in the kitchen or as, you know, men are objectified as particular gender roles or whatever actually spinning that on on our, on its head and saying actually we can objectify ourselves and we can be whoever we like so I quite like my paintbrush and what I kind of do is I just sometimes when I'm doing brushes and things like that is collaging I just put some abstract kind of little triangle cuts in the top of mine which kind of give it this different level like this so I kind of get my paintbrush ready to go I'd be interested to know what items you guys are drawing around to objectify yourselves I'm now going to draw around, oh, I'm going to use the music sheet and I'm going to draw around my childhood little rainbow bunny rabbit, which Mrs. Smith knitted to me when I was three years old and I still have it. Um, I'm going to draw around that on the music sheet because I just feel like it takes me back to a place where we used to sing a lot of nursery rhymes and have a lot of fun. And actually that is what's at my core really, being fun and playful and singing even though I can't sing. So these are objects that I think, you know, nostalgia, continuing to play in my arts practice. Unicorn horns, real ones. Goodness me. Ollie, that's amazing. That is amazing. Okay. Okay. 
Well done, guys. What else have we got? What other objects are you guys drawing around to objectify yourselves with? So I'm drawing around my rainbow bunny at the moment. Okay, so I've got another one to add to the pile. And as you can see, my shapes are very abstract. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration. So this here was my rosette. You can see how abstract that is. This here was my paintbrush. You can see how abstract that was. And this here is my bunny rabbit. Um, so none of them look particularly like the items. Um, but we know that they are those items. And it starts to create a little um, montage, a little scene, if you will. A garden trowel. Yes, Jenny, you love gardening. You love gardening. And um, Elizabeth is drawing around Lego people and a tiara. Awesome, Elizabeth. You're doing snuffles. Ah, oh, you're doing snuffles. Um, uh, can you remind me who snuffles is? Which one of your um, stuffed animals? Is it stuffed animal? You haven't got a pet called snuffles, have you? Let me know, Felix, who stuff snuffles is. I'd love to know. Um, can I do this one? on yeah i'm gonna do this one around this lovely flower material all oh, the black and white oh that looks good doesn't it i like the black and white actually so i'm gonna draw on a party hat now because um for those people who who do know know me a bit more i absolutely love hosting parties i love it when it's someone's birthday um i always think like with my artwork like if it's not fun what's the point that's a genuine question um so um yeah and there are loads of points to artworks that aren't fun you just got to find them but for me i think it's fun and right now we need a lot of fun and a lot of parties um because life's hard and it just makes it easier if we're having a hoop so i'm drawing around this circle now which is my party hat you're drawing around lumpy space, a lumpy space princess, Carly. That sounds awesome. A cute green crocodile with ears. Yes. Oh, Felix, a cute green crocodile with ears. Gorgeous. Gorge, gorge, gorge. So I have drawn around my party hat now. That's ready to go. And I have just got two items or three items left to draw around. We need to be quite quick now. Um, I'm going to use this yellow. So I absolutely love um, googly eyes. Um, so, and I use them in all, lots of my arts practice. These little puppets are quite, quite funny. Um, so I'm going to draw around this here. I think I'll actually, um, Felix has got a couple of sets of googly eyes from a project that I did with you and your mum, Felix, which is pretty cool. God, I'm a bit, I'm uh, bitter about glitter which was a good little one. Can't believe Oliver Jones is drawing around real unicorn horns. Where did you even find them? Where did you get them? Are they gonna be on your tour that you're gonna be doing on Friday, Oliver? I would love to see them. So I've got my googly eyes here that I'm drawing around. There you go, funny little shape. Huh? Um, I'm also going to draw around, this is, um, this isn't my first mobile phone, but it's pretty close to it. And I have a lot of memories attached to this phone. I actually had this when I was in art college in like year 2000, early 2000s. Um, it's very animatebile and, um, I've just kept it forever. I, I just, I remember it being on an advert and thinking like, God, if I could be the woman that owned that phone, like, Wow you know, people will think of me as the woman that owns that phone. So this really is something that I thought about objectifying myself with in a really shallow way. So I thought it has to be included, really. And it's just pretty cool. It's still got those stickers on it um, just to show how serious um, I am. Uh, Miffy stickers and things like that. So I'm going to draw around my phone, um, maybe on this black and white newspaper material. It's always got some nice flowers on the other side. Nature, which is good. Trowel is a great idea, Jenny. Here we go. Okay. Does it actually snuffle? Your cute green fluffy crocodile actually snuffles, Felix. Pretty much love that. That's amazing. We cut around here. Uh, 
Okay, I'll round that off a bit. There we go, I've got my mobile phone. So I've got a nice little collection of items that are building up now. The only one I haven't drawn around is my nail varnish. So I'll just do that quickly. And I think I'll do that on, I'll do with some pink actually, I think for that one. Um, as you can see, that was the last of my nails when I last got them done before lockdown. You can see a tiny bit of reminiscent there. But um, I actually don't do my fingernails myself because I absolutely love the chat in the nail salon. Um, so yeah, I mean, I really objectify myself quite a lot now thinking about it, Oliver, getting my nails done. Um, really am. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast actually, Ollie, and it's, uh, a, called the Guilty Feminist and, um, and the lady that presents that said that she's looking, she's, she's missing not being, uh, more beautiful than she naturally is due to lockdown. And I think there's a lot to be said in that. Oh, silhouette of Ruby. Fantastic, Jen. You're putting your dog in there. She does make up who you are and your identity. Oh, <laughs> your crocodile goes, do, do, do. Fantastic, Felix. So I've cut out a little paper circle here for my nail varnish. Now I've drawn around all of my objects. So I'm going to clear my station. I'm going to put all of my scrap paper away. Um, and I'm just going to keep my my silhouetted um, object paper shapes in one pile. And I'll put those back here in a moment. Oh, he does. She does even. Um, so uh, wherever you're at now, I suggest putting down the scissors and just clearing the station and bringing back in front of you your silhouettes and your new created shapes. So your silhouette and your newly created shapes are what you want to put in front of you now. So I've got my silhouette here. Um, I've got my newly created shapes here. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take your shapes one by one. You're going to glue them on the back. Or if you haven't got glue, you're going to use tape. And you're going to just stick them all over your silhouette head. Now, as you can see, they're not gonna fit inside perfectly, a lot of them. They're gonna go over the edge like this. Now that is absolutely um, fine. Uh, you can totally do that. Um, but we're gonna trim the, those at the edge. Um, Mr. Wilson, just to let you know, your message has been held for review. So I don't know what you were trying to say, um, but I won't approve it now in case it does anything to the YouTube stream. Um, but I'm sure it's going well. If you want to rewrite it, do let me know what you, were try what you were trying to say. I'd love to know what some of your objects are that you're drawing around. So you're going to take your glue now. You're going to um, cover the backs of your shapes in glue. and you're going to stick your shapes on top of your silhouette. And you're just gonna layer them up and kind of just go all over it, really. I'm gonna go over the black and white over there. So you're just gluing your shapes and sticking them all over your silhouetted head and they will overlap. And that's absolutely fine. Sticking those down. I'm going to use my I've only got a toe. Oh, you, you only got two items, have you, Felix? You mean? That's okay. If you want to carry on drawing round items and cutting them out of recycled paper, you can do because you could um you could just carry up this on beyond that. That's fine. Um, I'd say when I start doing the next cutting bit is when you need to down your creating your shapes bit and just start cutting with me. And you can add more to this once this um, once this workshop has finished, because we are trying to fit quite a lot in a very short amount of time, really. Um, so I'm going to stick my bunny along here, I think. Yeah. So I've kind of gone for a kind of black and white and a kind of pink and yellow theme because they're kind of my colors really that I like to, to use. I don't know what kind of colors you guys have gone for, what kind of recycled papers you've got. I'll put my rabbit over there. Put my paintbrush down there. Oh, 
Oh, you've lost one of them. Oh no, Felix. Don't worry. Honestly, don't worry. It's quite, it's quite, um, you can feel quite pressured doing a craft along. <laughs> feel like you need to keep up, but you it's absolutely fine. Don't worry. Don't worry if you've lost one. You'll see exactly how to continue this after this session. We're almost at the end of um of this little bit. So you'll see what's next. So my circle left to go. Looking for your shuttle. Oh, fantastic, Steve. That'd be a good thing to draw around. So as you can see, that's now what my silhouette looks like. And it's obviously gone over the edge here. Um, so what I need to do now is I need to um, cut around here and cut out these things. That's how you look. Oh, yeah. I thought I missed out a stage, but I totally haven't, guys. It's absolutely fine. Oh, you're using your favourite clothing catalogue for the collage papers. Another of your best objects. Amazing. Is that Lara Jute? So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors. You're going to turn. You've got your lovely uh, collage side, which has all gone over the top here and looks a bit messy. And now you're going to take your scissors and turn it around the other way so you can see where your card ends and where the collage papers go over the edge. And you're going to trim um, your collage papers off like this. Now, if you didn't do a silhouette earlier and you are feeling not so confident, you're one of my younger crowd, you could use these amazing cutouts that you've done from those objects. And instead of doing the silhouette, or if you want to do this activity again in a different way, what you could do is you could take those items and you could arrange them on a page to create a face and stick them down like that, if that's easier for you guys. But to be honest, I felt like everyone was following because um, I had a lot of silence, which always makes me think. I'm nervous, but I feel like at the end of a silence, silent mate with Meg, I end up getting a lot of pictures of these amazing things that you've created. So it's a concentration silence is what I'm hoping. Oh, good, good run, Sojourn. Wow, fancy. I've not heard of that one, Jenny. Great idea. So I'm cutting now around all of the overlap bits and I'm just taking my time with this a little bit um just to go around here fantastic brilliant so now I've got something that looks a little bit like this actually looks so strange. I didn't plan this. But doesn't this person look like they are wearing a COVID-19 face mask? I mean, that is not planned, but that has happened, which is pretty, pretty um, a sign of the times, I would say. A sign of the times indeed. Um, so what you're going to do now is you could quite literally take your other piece of cereal box card um, and you're going to slide it on top of that, or you could use a bit of colour card or anything like that. But what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be taking those secrets from earlier and we are going to be sellotaping them or gluing them down to the underneath side of um, uh, the underneath side of our uh, profile portraits. I've got a very exciting moment because um, in my example profile portrait, I told you that um, I'm a 33 year old thumbsucker and that was the secret that I, I glued in the example one but for this one I'm actually going to reveal some secrets that have been sent to me from none other than Oliver Jones the artist um from Steve Wilson who is the education manager at Meadow Arts and from Rebecca Farkas who is the marketing manager at Meadow Arts they have posted to me some secrets which I'm going to reveal now drum roll and stick on the underneath side of my profile portraits. Let me grab them. Okay. Tip top secrets to be revealed. Okay, let's 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 start with the big guns. Let's start with Oliver Jones. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, starting with Oliver Jones. Okay. Let's see what's inside here. I like throwing stuff over my shoulder. <laughs> just, okay, we're opening it out. 
top secret. Celine Dion, the ultimate essential collection is one of my guilty pleasures and I've usually eaten my lunch by 10 a.m. Good luck with the workshop. Best wishes, Ollie. I'll keep the uh, good luck with the workshop bit and I'm going to stick that secret underneath there. Sorry, I didn't keep it that secret. Kind of broadcast it to a international audience that spans Australia, America and New Zealand by the looks of it. Um, but you know, it's pretty good. Um, so I'm going to fold up my secret. Oh gosh, I got really excited then. And I'm going to take that one down there. Thank you very much. Celine Dion, eh? Do you know what? Um, Bob's mum, my mother-in-law, Jill, who's probably watching now, she only has a Celine Dion CD in her car. She doesn't actually have any others. It's just on repeat the whole time. She loves the rendition of My Heart Will Go On. Okay, next up, we have got Stephen Wilson inside the blue envelope. What is your secret, Steve? Let's go for it. So we have got in here. Okay. Mm. Okay, it's two secrets in one. Steve's silly secrets. I eat all my greens first on my plate to get them over with. Good tip. Good tip. Um, I once performed in a play in a real cave that took place at 4 a.m. in the morning and was seen by an audience that walked six miles to get there in the freezing cold. And the play was rubbish. Good secret, Steve. Thank you. I'm going to stick that right down. Heidi says, uh, Oliver Jones, she completely agrees with you, Celine Dion. <laughs> awesome. Well done. Um, Heidi is an extremely accomplished musical theatre um, performer. So, you know, if she says it's good, it's good. Um, here we have got this lovely one. And I absolutely adore the neon thought of my pink and yellow favourite colours on the back from Rebecca Farkas top secret open on the 9th of May guys it's actually been really hard not to open these when they've arrived in my letterbox it just looks so exciting okay oh my gosh this is exciting oh my gosh this is great when I was at art college I made a photo studio out of boxes I like to sit inside it sometimes, and I, it felt like a den. It made me feel secure. Oh, that's lovely, Rebecca. That is so nice. That is so nice. I'm kind of wondering what's, oh, this is the, and then here's a picture of you inside your den. That's a great secret. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to try and stick this down, but it feels like it's so nice. I'm gonna stick this down. And I don't know, I might just put this, I might have this photograph next to my profile portrait, actually. I'm going to stick this inside because, I mean, I have to, but it's such a beautifully written thing. These are such a great range of secrets. So hopefully your secrets are now sellotaped firmly to the back of your amazing portraits. And now what you could do after this session, if you wanted to, is your other piece of cereal box card that you've got. I did just knock everything on the floor earlier, didn't I? Uh, you have a bit of cereal box card that you've got like this. Um, you could just put the shreddy side face down and you could just put your um, your portrait on top and you have your masterpiece like this. You've objectified yourself. Um, if you wanted to later on to um, make a more detailed um, response, you could like get another bit of colored card. You could paint a bit of card up and you could put that bit on like that. You could maybe even um, color a bit of cardboard, which is what I've done with this piece here some cardboard painted black and you could put that um you could start layering up so things that you could do after the workshop or you could just play around with your juxtaposition using different materials at, that you have around the house perhaps you have a cardboard and you could do lots of different layers and create like a profile build up um or you could just call it a day like this, because it looks absolutely fabulous. So it's up to you now how you follow that on. And the reason that I asked you to have a, a magazine um, that you, has images in that you like 
is that the next thing that you could do if you wanted to fill any spaces, I quite like some blank negative space, but if you wanted to fill some spaces after this, you could have a look through these magazines, like I've got Vogue here, um, or classic good one for objectifying yourself is the Argos catalogue, because it's just full of objects, and you can be like, which objects have you got that reflect you, perfume, winner you could cut out some cut out some of the objects here without doing a silhouette and put those over to fill the spaces as well so for somebody like Felix who only got a couple of their um objects objectified earlier that's what you could do now to, to continue that um and then if you wanted to you could even so you've got your profile like this you could even do a little about me section just here on the side and you could write a little bit of facts about you so it's up to you you are the artist you're the person who presents yourself it's up to you how much you want to say about yourself it's up to you about the secrets that you keep inside that you keep hidden and it's up to you to to, to go out with a big spiel and say hey this is who I am this is what I do um, or not to have any words but just to show yourself with pictures so I'm not going to stick these things down because I want you to decide how much of yourself you want to show um, and to complete that really after, after this session and mount that in any way that you like. Um, the only thing that I would like you to do very quickly is get that magazine that I asked you to get. I would like you to look at what you've created so far and I would like you to flick through and find the first two words that you think um, correlate even remotely to that picture because that's going to give you the title for your artwork that you've just created. Oh. What's the, uh, I love this, Rebecca, your secret is adorable. Who's, ah, oh, whose secrets are they? Who's, I missed, did I miss that? Okay, Paris. I think that it does look a bit like I could be in Paris with that picture there. So that's one word that's gonna be for my title. I found the word Paris, what other thing? Um, ah, oh, dream. It looks like a strange dream, my profile picture so I am going to call this artwork Paris dream I'd love to know what words you've gone for for your artwork Paris dream is what I've gone for and I will just stick that down maybe really quickly just use a bit of time Ooh. Ooh, Rebecca. Paris dream so you've got a title for your artwork now and your follow-on activity is to mount it in whatever format you see best adding information or not to your amazing artwork uh, your words are feel good fantastic master rubber that's a good word and making waves Gorgeous words, guys. Absolutely gorgeous. So you've finished your artworks. They are all ready to go, almost. I think some of you, last minute, that's a good one. I think some of you are going to um, finish completing them, have a little juxtaposition of them. But please do, I'm going to slide you back over now to my little yellow set. Bob's just there next to me, getting things ready. I would like you to do because we're coming to the end of our time together is I'd like you to finish your artworks you decide when you finish that artwork um it's up to you to say when it's a finished piece and when it is ready and you're happy with it I would absolutely love you to share a picture of your artwork with me by Wednesday and you're going to do that by um sharing it on social media with the hashtag make with Meg um, or emailing it to this email address images at meadowarts.org images at meadowarts.org or hashtag make with Meg so Bob's just going to put that information up in the chat for you guys so please share your pictures as soon as possible with me um, because after Wednesday hello Epic Out aka Felix because after Wednesday a very exciting thing is going to be happening which is I'm going to be putting together a portrait exhibition. Oh, that's correct, Bob. Yeah, images at meadowarts.org. A portrait exhibition premiere, which will be shown on my YouTube channel next Saturday at 5.30 p.m. 
Um, and it is going to be an exhibition of your artworks intermixed with the amazing artworks of artist Oliver Jones. So it's going to be a profile picture exhibition. Where we're going to sh I'm going to take you on a little tour um, of, this, of this exhibition and you're going to be artists alongside Oliver Jones in this unique, special premiere exhibition. So you're going to come on a little private view inside my art studio, which I'll turn into a gallery and I can take you on a little tour. So it'll be premiering on my YouTube account. Um, it's not going to be a live event. It's going to be a pre-record of me touring you around the, the art gallery, which is in my studio. And you'll be able to see that, guys. Um, so please do um, send send me your pictures I would love to see them and include them in the exhibition um and I think there's just one other little uh little announcement to say before the end I'm just check in portrait exhibition ah which is an absolutely massive thank you to Meadow Arts for asking me to do this make with Meg. It's been a very wobbly time for artists right now. And I really, really appreciate the support and you guys asking me um, to do a workshop in this format for your for your audience. It means an absolute lot. Um, it's It's been really tricky for artists at the moment. And it's really nice to have companies that are like, got your back and holding you up and saying, yeah, let's do it. Let's just be brave and put something on the internet. So thank you so much to Meadow Arts. Thank you to Ollie Jones for um, lending us your exhibition in this virtual format as our inspiration for today's workshop. It's been so lovely, an amazing starting point and actually really fun to just like think about beauty and what that means. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, Oliver Jones, please do tune in if, you, uh, if you're a fan of his work, which I'm sure everybody is, please tune in to his studio tour um, which is going to be broadcast on the Meadow Arts YouTube page on Friday. So that's the Friday that's next coming, which is uh, just less than a week away. Um, I'm not sure what time it's going to be on. Do we know what time it's going to be on? I think it's a pre-record, so it's going to be premiering on Friday. Um, so you can uh, log on in and have a little tour of the artist's actual studio. Um, and when this is all over on the other side of it, you'll be able to go to Barrington Hall. You'll be able to see those artworks the real McCoys, the real, real things. Ah, oh, Elizabeth says, thank you for doing all these wonderful crafts. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Been lovely to have you guys here. Ah, oh, a venue is nothing without people's art inside, says Jenny, and long live the artists. Ah, oh, thank you so, no, thank you, Rebecca. It's been absolutely lovely. Thank you so much. Oh, the tour is at 2 p.m. So 2 p.m. on Friday, um, there is a tour on the Meadow Arts YouTube channel. So 2 p.m. on Friday, little note that you can just scribble down your diaries. Um, it's been a strange old time where I feel like no one had anything to put in their diaries. And now we've all got loads of things to put in our diaries. And luckily, because the Internet's a bit like a portal where you can just go somewhere, it feels like you can do loads in a day. Um, but this one is one not to be missed. Um, and I think that there are some special questions being answered already um, that, uh, that Oliver has prepared. So it's exciting times. Oh, thank you so much, Alison. Thank you so much to, um, to my colleagues and fellow artists and creatives in um, Texas for joining me. It's absolutely fantastic to have you here. Um, we've got New Zealand, Australia and Texas um, in this workshop, which is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, Liverpool, obviously. Love this workshop. Thank you so much, Carly. It's been amazing. I cannot wait to see your pictures to see what they come through like. And I will 100% be putting together an exhibition. I'm going to try and see what your messages say now, Steve. It says I can... Ah, oh, fantastic. So please, could you also sign up to um, Meadow Arts newsletters for more stuff like this? So Meadow Arts are going to be putting together lots of different things um, responding to the current situation as it unfolds. They've been very proactive at finding new ways and approaching people like myself to, to do different things during this strange time. And if you enjoyed this workshop, please um, sign up to their newsletter um, and you'll be able to get emailed to your parents um, different things that are happening. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you so much for stopping in. Thank you so much. Well, guys, I'm, I think we've, we've, we've completed the session. So um, have a lovely afternoon. Enjoy your paddling pools. Take care and uh, goodbye. Bye.